Take a look at these beauties here. These are my apple seedlings, and this row here is definitely going to have some strongly red fleshed apples. I mean, just look at the color on those leaves. Wow. So this row here that's very red is Wixen crossed with maple. Those are both crab apples. Maple is extremely red flushed, very deep red. The wood is red, the bark is red, everything's red about that apple. Wixen is not red flushed. It's a sweet, extremely sweet, uh, small crab apple with a uh, unique and delicious flavor. So you can see here that maple is listed first on the tag. It's May X Wick. Now that means that maple was the seed parent and that may have an effect on you know why all these are red. There's one yellow in there, there's one yellow in there, but all the rest are strongly red leaved. And you know, those are all gonna have red flesh for sure. I'm sure of that. Just um, how red and how good is the other question. So it would be interesting to see if I crossed it the other way, crossing maypole with Wixen, which I believe I've done. And it would be interesting to see how many of those come out red. I heard that the red flesh gene is dominant, um, but you know, I'm not really into the, that part of it and studying the genetics and all that kind of bores me, so I don't really pay much attention to it. I'm just kind of seeing what happens here. So let's take a look at these over here. These also have some very strong red leaf tendency here, and I'm guessing that these are also maypole crosses. And there it is. This is maypole crossed with pink parfait. Now pink parfait and grenadine, which I've used as both as parents, and all the other edder apples don't really seem to have much red pigment in the leaves. Some of them have a little bit, but most of them don't. And even grenadine, which is very strongly red fleshed, I mean, it's not a deep, deep ruby red. It's still kind of a strong pink, but it's, it's pretty damn pink. And it doesn't have red leaves. Um, Brubayot doesn't have red leaves. I can see the tree from here and I don't really see any tints of red in its uh, yellowing leaves. But maypole is, is an extreme example. It really is just very, very red. And then these right here are um, Rubaiot crossed with maypole. So Rubaiot's the seed parent and maypole is the pollen parent. But these also are showing a lot of red. These are interesting here. They're grenadine seed parent uh, crossed with chestnut pollen. Chestnut is another very sweet, very delicious crab apple. But as you can see, these are really showing a pretty strong tendency to have a lot of purple in the leaves. So maybe hidden somewhere in chestnut's genes is some kind of switch that, you know, turned on some red fleshed parent or just, yeah, some, something that got turned on when it crossed with uh, grenadine. Yeah, so very interesting, very beautiful. And, you know, I think that could really be used to effect in uh, landscaping to have this kind of color coming on in the fall or mixes of them, you know? That is just gorgeous. Now that one is, um, well, I hope I didn't lose track of these tags. I don't know what that one is. I'm gonna have to dig around a little bit and figure out what it is. Anyway, let's talk for a minute about this and then I'm going to tag these. So it's been a while, except for a little bit of tasting. We tasted a few apples this year, but otherwise we haven't really revisited the apple breeding project for a while because there hasn't really been much to do. Um, I grew these seedlings out, planted them in the ground, and they've grown for a year and now it's time to tag them. So if you're not familiar with this whole project, there's a playlist which I'll link right here at the top of the screen and at the end of the video. And that has all the apple breeding uh, video project videos in it. So just to kind of summarize, all of these are intentional crosses between two parents that I chose, you know, on purpose. So I took the pollen of one of the parents and crossed it onto the flower of another parent, grew out the apples, collected the seeds, planted the seeds um, this past winter, early spring, planted them in the ground in spring and let these grow for one year. So now these are ready to graft out and be moved to the field and eventually they'll fruit, make apples and we'll decide whether they're any good or not. So today I'm tagging all these plants. Now I should have tagged them a long time ago. I should have tagged them as soon as I put them in and I'm hoping I didn't lose track of any of them. I have like a system with tags and everything, but you know, the bed's been 
I don't know, tags get lost and moved and stuff like that. So hopefully I won't uh, mix anything up. Worst case scenario is I'll grow an apple and think it's great or think it's terrible, but I'll have gotten the parents mixed up so I don't know what they are. So I use these aluminum tags. They're made from old printing plates. So they're thin aluminum plates. You can cut them with scissors or with like a, the old shear type paper cutter works really good. You can write on them with pencil and or scratch it in with like a sharp stylus. And uh, even if you just write it on with pencil, it lasts for many, many years and they, they work pretty good. And then I just strip down pieces of wire that are stranded inside. So they have like a lot of little strands and I use those to wire each tag onto the plants. What I put on the tag is an identifier code basically. So it tells me what the two parents are, which one is the seed parent and which one is the pollen parent, what date they were crossed or planted. And it just has a number that's a unique code. So that helps me keep track of everything through the whole process. Like if I want to take any notes, I can write, oh, you know, write the code down and then take notes about the apple until it's named because I can't obviously name them all because there's 120 or so out there and another 120 or so right here. So that's what I'm doing today. And I'll actually just, I'm just going to write down all the information, go inside, make all the tags and then come back out and put them onto the trees. So the next step with these is to graft these, like cut each one off and graft it onto a dwarfing rootstock. I use dwarfing rootstock because theoretically they will fruit sooner. And also I'm planting them extremely close together, like 12 inches apart actually. I think all those are planted 12 inches apart. It's very close. So I just like to use a small rootstock. It seems to be working, so I'm just gonna stick with that. And I usually use Bud 9 and that works good, but we'll see what they have available or if I order early enough or not. Anyway, that'll come later and we'll cover that when we get to it. After that, the, the newly grafted trees go out into the field in rows. So I have to dig, you know, beds, plant them all out, and then um, they're on their way. And these first ones took, I think, four or five years. What was it? Five years, maybe? Four? I don't remember. Four or five years to fruit. So that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at results from these in like five years, just starting to get results. You know, I think it's six and seven years, we'll probably see a lot more results. But even then, just because I get to taste something doesn't mean that I, I don't know everything about it. You know, unless it's grown out for some years, we don't really know what disease it's affected by and uh, other things about its growth characteristic. Does it bear a lot? Does it bear very little? Does it tend to bear only every other year? Uh, does the apple keep well? I mean, there's just so many things and that, that just is a long process. And that's part of the reason that apple breeding is such a big deal in commercial breeding is because not only do they have to plant like a ton of seedlings to get something that they think might work commercially, but then it has to be tested. It has to be field tested for a long time. So they expose it to diseases, plant it under different conditions and just you know have to observe it for a while. So uh, anyway, the whole thing's exciting, but it's definitely a long-term project. So I'm gonna get my notes together, go inside and make a bunch of tags. And um, I think, you know what? Uh, before I shut this camera off, I'm gonna run over and grab that pink parfait apple that's hanging on a tree over here. Oh, it's got a rotten spot on it, that's too bad. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may already know that I'm a big fan of this apple. This one seems to have some problems, maybe bitter pit or something's going on. Plus, it has a rotten spot here, so it may not be any good. I only have two of these on the tree right now, and um, <clears throat> the other one actually looks a little better than this. But this is just a superb apple in my book. So it's got some problems here with this. I think that's bitter pit. I don't know, I don't usually get that. So I can see just a barely a tinge of pink in here, but usually this is more of a red fleshed apple or kind of like mottled pink. Um, but it's just delicious. This one has very high sugar for pink parfait anyway. The texture is outstanding. And this one also tastes like honey, like the last one I tasted. And um, just a really outstanding dessert apple. Yes, very much like honey. Now this is usually a very, it's a very beautiful apple if it didn't have all this going on. Yeah, I think this should be grown more. 
This is about all I have hanging on the tree this year. Normally I have, well, there's a few Lady Williams too, but they're not really ready yet. Right, we're about in the season for this now. I think usually, um, I think of this as a, are eating it around Christmas and somewhere around in that neighborhood. Yeah, this one doesn't have much of that berry flavor because it doesn't have any red pigment. And that flavor comes from the red pigment. So the more it has, the more of that flavor it'll have. But it does have a very strong honey flavor. All right, I'll stop boring you with watching me eat this apple. Here you can see some of the pink right here. Maybe. This is the cross. This one is Sweet 16, crossed with Wixen. So 16 is first. That means that Sweet 16 is the seed parent and Wixen is the pollen parent. This is the year it was pollinated, 2015. And this is a just random number assigned to one of the 10 seedlings of this cross from this year. So I ended up with 10 seedlings of this cross from this year. And so this is number five. One of them will be number five. It doesn't really matter which, it's just uh, you know, a sign number. And th so this is really the thing that helps keep track of the individual seedlings in a group. That simple. Five down, 120 or so to go. I don't know, something like that.